The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this my Father glorified, by this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples." The Gospel of the Lord. A long time ago, when I was about eight years old, in the beginning of the fourth grade, something extraordinary happened to me, something very unexpected. I was in school, it was at recess, and there I was on the playground, and for the first time in my life, I fell in love. I fell in love. I fell in love with basketball. Yes, I know it's a little pathetic, but it's true. I fell in love with the basketball, and from that day on, for as long as I can remember as a kid, I would play it every day at school at recess. And then when my dad finally put up a hoop in our driveway, I'd be out there after school every day with my other friends playing basketball, along with, my, along with the friends, and, and I... I had a dream. My dream, of course, as an eight-year-old, was to become the point guard for the Lakers. That was my dream. But as I got older, as I got older and I realized I didn't have that otherworldly talent and that I wouldn't become six foot five, well, my hopes changed, and I just hoped to make the freshman basketball team when I got to high school. So the summer before my freshman year, I played on the summer, the summer team. And then during school, before the season started, I played on the preseason team. And then, of course, I would practice and train all throughout that preseason. And then tryouts came. And tryouts were great. I was very confident. I made the first two rounds of cuts. And then that final day, I was very confident. But when I looked at the final roster and I didn't see my name there, my heart sunk. I was heartbroken. That was the first time I ever felt rejected. It was the first time I ever felt rejected by my peers, by the community, by adults. But of course, it wouldn't be the last time I felt rejected. A few years after that, I got rejected from my dream school. I got rejected from UCLA. A few years after that, despite my early success in my career, I was fired from Price Waterhouse Coopers. And then throughout my life, before I was a Jesuit, I heard no many times from girls that I would ask out. I always felt the sting of rejection. Now, if you are anything like me and you too have been rejected, well, there's some good news. You're in good company. Michael Jordan famously was cut from his freshman, from his basketball team in high school. His coach said that he just wasn't good enough. Same thing with, with Oprah Winfrey in her early days as a, on TV. She was fired from her producer because he told her that she just didn't have any TV talent. Walt Disney, he was fired from the KC Star or newspaper in Kansas City because his editor said he lacked imagination and creativity. Failure, of course, is common. Failure is common. And it even happened 
to possibly the second most important person in the history of the church. In today's first reading, we hear about St. Paul, and he too was rejected. We hear about that in today's first reading when he goes down to Jerusalem and he tries to join the disciples, and they are afraid of him. They don't believe that he's a disciple. He too was rejected by the very people, the very church that he became, basically became a founder of. He too was rejected. And rejection and failure, of course, it's, it's difficult, it's tough. And specifically, I can think of, of two reasons in particular. First of all, rejection says something about you. It says something about you, uh, whether it's true or not, whether it's true or not, and whether you want to hear it or not, it says something about you. For St. Paul, it said that he, was, he wasn't trustworthy. It said that he wasn't good enough. For me, it said that I wasn't athletic enough. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't attractive enough. And all of this, it adds to, it adds to insecurities that we have. It adds to our self-doubt. It takes away from the our own value, our own self-worth. So what do we do with that? Well, we don't deny it. We don't capitulate it to, to it either. But we embrace it. We embrace it. By embracing it, it could be a factor. It could, it could motivate us. It could inspire us to work harder, to try harder, to push ourselves to the limits, to reach new heights. That's exactly what Michael Jordan did, Oprah Winfrey, Walt Disney. It pushed them to grow into becoming the people that God called them to be. Not only does it push you further, but it could also, it could also open doors and opportunities to other avenues in your life. When I was cut from the team, I began doing other things. I started I started surfing, I started uh, playing golf, I became interested in politics and theater. When I got rejected from UCLA, well, it made it easier to go to Berkeley. And I can't imagine not having gone there for school because it was so formative between the friends that I made and the experiences I had. When I got fired from PricewaterhouseCoopers, as, as big as an ego hit that was, it was a great thing for me. It forced me out of a career in a center, put me off the, on a path away from a career I had no business being in. In a sense, it also led me towards the Jesuits in a way, as did all those rejections from all the girls I asked, asked out for. Rejection is good in a sense because it can push ourselves into becoming the people that God calls us to be. And it opens up other doors, other opportunities for us. The second reason why rejection and failure is, is difficult, though, because it disconnects us. It disconnects us from those connections that we seek in life. Connections to a person, a community, something bigger than ourselves, an organization. It disconnects us from all that. And it's difficult, but it's also necessary for us especially whenever we're pursuing our own dreams or pursuing our own plans. It's important. It's God's way of shaping us, of forming us, of pruning us into becoming those people that God calls us to be. And that's why in today's gospel, Jesus says, I am the vine and my father is the vine grower. He prunes those branches so that they can bear more fruit. Rejection and failure for us is God's way of pruning us. And not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of others as well, as we become more fruitful, as we become the people that God calls us to be. And while it is painful to be rejected, while it is painful because we are disconnected, Jesus reminds us that although we can be disconnected from community or what have you, we remain connected to what's most important. We remain connected to Jesus, the source, the summit of our lives. That's why he says, remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Remain in me. We stay connected to what's most important, 
That's what helps us get over these rejections and failures. Rejection and failure, the reminders to us that we're not perfect, that we're imperfect. And imperfect, that's the title of this preaching series that we're in, where we're exploring how we follow Jesus. And we do so, but we do so imperfectly. Rejection and failure, that's God's way of shaping us, of pruning us, becoming those people God calls us to be. And it's as if Jesus, it's as if God is pruning away our imperfections. You know, I mentioned those, some of those failures and rejections I had early in my life and the religion. I don't want to keep you here too much longer, but I believe that all those rejections and all those failures that I had in my life, in a sense, they were necessary to drive me to where I am today in my life as a Jesuit priest. And reflecting on my life as a Jesuit priest, it's as if I'm living that dream that I had when I was eight years old. It's as if I'm, I'm the point guard for the Lakers, if you will. I wanted to be that because I thought that's what would give me the most joy, the most fulfillment, the most happiness in my life. And living, though, living as a Jesuit, living as a Jesuit priest, serving here, having fallen in love with all of you here, I found that joy. I found that joy. Rejection and failure. Do not be afraid of rejection and failure. Fail gloriously. Because in doing so, Jesus guides you to exactly where you need to be. And connected to the vine, you can do what God calls you to do, and you can do so without fear. 